Hello, Hello. and welcome again to the one and only now semi-true hobo, Hobo Tom, and girlfriend wrestling show. And I'm here to talk about some professional wrestling. Probably most importantly, I have a whole bunch of shout out to give to everyone. So let's see here. Over this weekend, there was so much wrestling. It was crazy, folks. I can't believe what's happening in this. It was awful bright looking up. I have all those lights on. Oh, that's right. I was getting getting my fishing clothes ready for tomorrow since I no longer have a job. And Well, I did have interview, two interviews today. I had to clean up. Not, not as scruffy looking as I was probably Sunday morning-ish. Yep, Sunday, Sunday was a rough day for me, folks. That dude... Job interviews today. One, they said, okay, we'll send you the email. You're hired. Got that. That's a seasonal temporary thing. That's good. It's a little, mo it's a little more money in the bank. And we'll see what happens at the other job. And I think I'm still working at my other job. So it's just the one place where evil dwells is where I'm going. Good for them. So let's do a little recap from this weekend. First thing, there was a super showdown. And to be true, for the Super Showdown, I got 6 out of 10 right, with 2 bonus parts right. So therefore, I'm in the head one Stephanie McMahon. For I know her every thought and every desire. Ugh! I don't want to know the desires. No, 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 no. I, no, no, no. I, I, I take that back. I just know her thoughts on pro wrestling. Yes. Oh, wow. That mic has good pickup today. The speakers are extra powerful. And then I also, again, you can watch that if you go to my video list. It's probably the more one of the more recent ones. And it says very simply, it's a super showdown R R and R show. This guy, Hobo Tom. And then I also did a Dominion show. Dominion's put on by New Japan Pro Wrestling. Unfortunately, it did not fare as, as well there. For I only got four out of nine matches right. I got the snooze match right. I got the match of the night right. No, actually, I got that wrong. Because Dragon Lee versus Will Offrey was definitely a match of the night. Kota Bushi and Tetsuya Naito, that, that was a close second. But again, second only counts in, close only counts in the horseshoes and hand grenades. But I did get my Stone Cold Lock of the Night right. Lock, Stone Cold Lock of the Night right. And therefore, I always goes if I can get the, some of those bonuses right. I got two out of three right. That's good. That means I am a 50-50 booker for New Japan Pro Wrestling. And then just for those two shows alone, there were some people that chatted with me. One, again, one person sent me an email, and one of these actually subscribed. So let me go through my list of shout-outs. First one, Marco Antonio. Thank you very much. Let's see, let me go. I forget what I. Prizes. No, not that menu. Let me go take a look. I, I should have actually written this down, folks. I have no clue what I'm doing most of the time. All I know is that I had two job interviews and work to do. And I couldn't get to Walmart for my mini sodas because they had me wait forever at the one place. So let's see here. So, oh, whoa, what's this? Marco Antonio. You get that six count.
Twisted Pixie. She actually gave me a phone call. Mm -hmm. So therefore, she is going to get the air drum air guitar. Omar Solarzano, and I always apologize if I butcher your name. You are getting the briefcase box, the briefcase, briefcase boom box. And to this person, I don't read Japanese, and I probably did a horrible job of spray painting your name. But for this person, he gets the dirty pen. Michael Kuchin. I think I'm saying your name right. Again, I do apologize in case I scribble your name down wrong and, and can't figure out how to say it. I always try, though. You are definitely a member of the El Generico Band! All generic Narco band. Manu Cuevas. This holy sit moment goes out to you. Holy and slicks! You were there in the morning with me. Although where you was, it was ten thirty in the morning, and where I am, it was 
Five thirty in the morning. Not fair. Just for that, you do get this lucha on a forklift. And those are all the shoutouts. Again, if you would like a shout-out with your own free video de dedication, you can always earn that a couple of ways. You do have to earn it. Um, but it's very simple to earn. All you have to do is either send me an email, leave a comment, subscribe, and I think there's a way to like and leave your name too. So those are the four ways. And you can, of course, if you don't like it and say bad things, I'll send, I will give you a shout out just because you commented. It won't be that nice of a picture though, folks. So those, that's everything from the weekend. So let's move on to Monday. For it was a glorious Monday. And if I catch fish tomorrow, it will be a glorious Tuesday. Right. I am free at last, free at last. Oh, praise someone, I, I am free at last. Well, for the most part, at least. So let's talk about some Monday Night Raw. So it starts out kind of standard show opening. Um, I think they're learning from Impact a little bit because they're having much shorter promos before they get to the matches. So I think this only took about 15 minutes before our first match. So Seth Rollins comes out. Um, he just talks about <laughs> a little bit of Super Showdown. I forget what Renee Young said, but it was very company sounding. Sound like something Vince fed her into her ear earpiece. And then of course the with the flashbacks from Super Showdown, which was a eh show. Um Baron Corbin then came out. And then of course with that, Sami Zayn. And then Kevin Owens comes out. So again, it's kind of a little bit of a setup for Stomping Ground. Which I did not realize was this month. I guess they must have thought that this Super Showdown was so bad. Instead of having no pay-per-views besides that. They're going to have one on Sunday. And barring... Yeah, it's not going that quickly. I'll probably be covering that... that oh, wait, I'll be covering that anyway. A Sunday night. I'll be covering that on Sunday. Again, it'll be a live stream on r, &R show. WWE folks is a lot tougher with their copyright regulations, so I cannot... So anything like I did last time where I had a little like picture button down here somewhere. Um, so that was the promo. It was okay. It's kind of standard promo-ish. I do look funny when I shave and clean up the weird looking. I don't look like a hobo anymore. Just look like, I don't know. Go on the street. Hobo on the street. Um, our first match started off uh, Lars versus Lucha House Party. And this time it was an elimination match. And with this, for the most part, it was an elimination squash match. Um, Kalisto was first eliminated. He tried to jump onto Lars. I said, eh, eh, hit him with a freak accident and pinned him. Lindsay Dorado, tiny bit of offense, but then it was a pop-up running powerbomb thing. Kalis uh, Lindsay Dorado eliminated. And then last of all, least, it was Grand Metalik. <laughs> Lars was having fun with. 
because he he went for the pin once that pulled him up. He went outside the ring, and this was great. You have the you have to picture this: the pinatas on top of the ring ring steps. I don't know. They gave him names. Yeah, I know pinata one, pinata two. He picked up Kalisto, <laughs> power slammed him or body slammed him onto the pinatas. Goes on top of the steel steps. Candy goes everywhere. It's a mess. It was fun. Goes back in, beats, uh, hits another uh, power move on Grand Metalik. Pull them up again. Not done yet. I think he just like tossed Lindsay Dorado somewhere. Oh, he um kind of like blonde darted him into the ring post corner. That's right. And then all of a sudden he does a diving headbutt onto Grand Metalik. Match over. It was a fun squash match. I can't complain. They should have done this really at Super Showdown, but this was good. This is a ham sandwich. Then we have R-Truth getting chased into an elevator, and all of a sudden they exceeded the elevator's weight limit. Elevator stopped. Poor Carmella, she's stuck in there with EC3 holding a red cup. Everyone else, again, the whole gag behind this was, there's no referee, so you can't have a match. This kind of goes out throughout the show. Then there was... Ooh la la! Michael Cole actually referenced the fact that Becky Lynch... We'll hear from Becky Lynch later. And she was with her boyfriend, Seth Rollins. Sethy Poo. Uh, so that was, kind of, that was kind of funny that they that they actually referenced that. Normally they don't. Um, then you have a split-screen interview between Lacey Evans and Becky Lynch. I don't know. I think Becky Lynch has to catch up on her American idioms because I guess it has to be something things like putting the dirt before the bush. I have no idea what that means. Uh, what, whatever. Um, it was okay. Whatever. Oh, she she did she did say <laughs> go back there, Lacey Evans, and put on your granny knickers. That was that was kind of funny. Bad images of granny, granny panties. Never. Wait a second. I've never. No woman I've ever dated. Indeed. Uh, then you have Alexa Bliss, and now it's not he Alexa Bliss, because she's talking back to Nikki. Um. How she kicked Nikki to the curb a little bit because her partner is going to be Lacey Evans, and and she's like, oh, well, well, you can call me Lexi. It's like, oh, okay, not Alexa Bliss. Um, I don't know. I think we're gonna have a swerve with Alexa. Hopefully, they do it after she wins the title from Bailey. Swerves. Or has Nikki Cross do her bidding for her? Swerves Nikki Cross. Nikki Cross then becomes said SmackDown champion. WWE, I want my shiny quarter for that thought. I should have that as too too much stuff right now. Then we have the one and only Miz TV with Samoa Joe. Um. He says, who are you going to fight? It's like, it's not cool to mess with Sam's family. Samoa Joe very simply says, Let, let's talk about your family. Miz gets up says, okay, it's time to fight. Samoa Joe says, yeah, let's fight. He, uh, Miz obviously does not realize the many times that Samoa Joe re re referenced, oh, Wendy. And that's, I think, Wendy Jones or Wendy Styles. But this lot of course but then of course with this, Braun says, I wanna I, I wanna change. I want you to get these hands. And Bobby Lashley shows up. And then Ricochet shows up and Cesaro just like jumped Ricochet. I feel bad for Cesaro. But this led to this led to a six man tag match. It was Braun Strowman and Ricochet and the Miz versus Bobby Lashley, Samoa Joe, and Cesaro. And Lashley is freakishly agile for being that big a man. I don't understand how he does that. Of course, Braun's, they all kind of get their spots in. Um, Braun Strowman gets to run around the ring a lot. 
Uh, Miz gets his kind of gets his spots. He gets his sit down, clothesline in the corner thing. This is our swing went on long. Even Renee says he swung him forty five times. I have no idea how he swung. He was being a little bit dizzy at the end too, but still, it was cool though. It's like he's still going and going and going. When's he gonna stop? He's still going. Oh, now he puts him down. And this is how I felt the effects of that. Um, puts the Miz in the sharpshooter. Eventually, Ricochet comes in with a code breaker. Braun starts to run around the ring because Cesaro is so dizzy he falls out. Tackles him. Eventually, Bobby Lashley gets his clothesline. And then Miz isolates Cesaro. Does the skull crushing finale on him. Ricochet does a 630. I do hope Cesaro's knee is okay. Because I think he kind of landed awkwardly on the thigh. So hopefully everything's good there. Because Cesaro looked in genuine pain. I felt knee pain once. I want to feel knee pain. This was a really fun match though. Um, The faces go over. So Braun, Ricochet, and The Miz went over. And a good match. I was entertained. It's a good cheeseburger match. And then there's um, Baron Corbin and Sami Zayn have a couple of words backstage. Right about who's going to be the guest referee for Stomping Grounds. Becky comes out, and I still do like the fact that the women's belt either has white Velcro or still uses the snaps. I, I'm old school. What can I say? I'm old. Um, this sets up the next match between Becky and Becky Lynch and Bailey. Take on Alexa Bliss with Nikki Cross in her corner and Lacey Evans. Lacey Evans is either freakishly tall, or all four of those women are really short, including Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch is definitely taller than Alexa. Taller than, well, everyone's taller than Nikki Cross. But Lacey Evans powers all over all three of them. <laughs> Lacey Evans, getting better. Um, this match was definitely better than the match she had against Charlotte. I don't know if Charlotte just said, nah, I'm not doing this. Or Lacey Evans just had a bad night. So it's kind of, I think the only one, I think the, there was the one spot Lacey Evans couldn't figure out to do from the slingshot position. So it looked like she was going to go cross body, then she's like, no leg drops, like, oh, I'm falling elbow. So again, she still has a lot to learn in that squared circle, folks. And um, Bailey, of course, there's always. Hey, or there's Bailey, or hey, Bailey. Um, so that was kind of it. Nothing much. Um, eventually, Nikki Cross does save Alexa Bliss. Uh, Lacey Evans then gets involved. Starts doling out women's rights. Uh, Alexa Bliss, she looked like she almost got concussed. Because she hit that, not, this, not the bottom turnbuckle. But she glanced off that second turnbuckle really weird. Bailey, to me, is just not the smoothest wrestler either, though. Hey, you can deliver all the heat you want to me. This is my opinion, and I've seen a couple of her matches. Unless she's with certain others, she just doesn't have good chemistry with others, I guess. Besides, like, Sasha. I mean, every time we see a Bailey match, it's kind of... It's not botchy. It's not smooth, and it's not quite unsmooth. So it's that really weird, you know, like, ugh, that doesn't look right. It's like she didn't measure that properly. Or she thought Alexa was a little bit shorter than, than she actually looked, which is a whole thing. Uh, let's see here. Oh, uh, Lacey Evans didn't miss a moonsault. And, and it looks like, and it looked like she needs that double-sided tape on her outfit because because we uh that wasn't too bad of a match. I mean it was pretty good. Um, Alexa Bliss and Lacey Evans do pick up the win. Nikki Cross looks semi confused, which is not good. Hopefully they do steal my ID and shine and send me a shiny quarter in the mail. But overall, it was still a good cheeseburger match.
Then uh, Sammy Zing butters up Shane to get the rest spot for tonight. Paul Heyman pulls a promo mentioning um, the PG era and Brock's going to catch him when Brock feels like it. EC3 is in semi-funny, semi-checked out state on the elevator. They go back to the elevator a couple times. Then the Iconics! Yeah. They take on San Jose's finest in Aliyah Mia and Lisa Lace. Wait a second. Didn't my co-worker tell me a certain movie and one of the female characters' names was Lisa, Lisa Lace? What kind of... Oh, I remember now. What's Tranquilo? Forehead. Ah! Put bad thoughts in my head. <laughs> well, they took on them. Um, it was a squash. It was it was a squash match. Lace, um, Lisa Lace didn't even get in the ring. They beat up the Aliyah Mia. And I think the crowd started chant Mama Mia. Oh, terrible. This crowd wanted beach balls, folks. But this match itself, can of soup. And then we had a Shane and uh, Roman Reigns a Super Showdown highlight package. Because we had a Best in the World celebration. <laughs> I love the fact Drew just drinks out of the champagne bottle. Shane pours the champagne into his trophy. Oh, then the iconic said that the San Jose Sharks would never, ever see a hockey championship. And, of course, that gets some booze. So they get their heel, cheapo heel heat that way. And this leads to a match because the Revival come out. They want to drink champagne. And, and, and Shane's like, eh, 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 you're, you're working. You have to wrestle first. Then you can drink. This isn't the days of Arn Anderson, Ole Anderson. And, Woo! Ric Flair! Woo! High styling! Woo! Profiling! Woo! Champagne drinking! Woo! With your lady! Woo! Driving limousine riding! Woo! Up all night! Woo! Wrestling. This is a more subdued wrestling. And Ric Flair did more than drink champagne in the backseat of that limo, folks. You just have to watch those two Viceland Dark Side of the Rings about Gino Hernandez and the Von Eriks to realize there was a little more about those Texas wrestlers. Ooh, scary stuff. Another reason why I don't like Texas. It scares me. They, they just shoot people. It's legal to kill people. Wait. And it's not murder. I don't like Texas. Um, so we had the Revival versus the Usos versus Hawkins and Ryder. Zach starts off, he kind of knew it was going to be between the two teams, the Revival and Usos, because Hawkins and Ryder, they had their run with the titles. They had their, they had their fun in the sun. Um, so it was pretty good. It was, it was, a, it was actually a pretty good, it was a good match. I mean, I mean, Ryder and Hawkins, they know how to tag team, they know how to work a tag team match. They're really good. I like the fact that, um, when the Revival just goes, night, night. When he uh, hit like almost a brain buster on the outside to Haw to Hawkins, and that was fun. Again, you have the, t the classic quick tags by all the tag teams, and they really do not know how to work. These three teams actually really do know how to work a really good tag team match. It was fun, exciting, kept up a good pace. You didn't know what was happening. Um, eventually, of course, you have the double flying by the Usos. Again, just the nice tag team work. Uh, Everyone kind of hit their spots except for Hawkins, I think. I don't even know what Hawkins' finisher is, anyway. I know Zach Ryder hit the Rough Rider. It's good to see him in action. Um, there, there was a one-man Uso kick party. And there was a sneaky pin by the Revival, and that was really good. Again, the Revival one. This was another fun cheeseburger match. Let me go back to the elevator scene, and EC3 was married five times? Listen, you have to learn after marriage number two. Some things are not for you. 
So I guess Drake Maverick's getting married soon, I guess. He said, yeah, he just wants to wear that belt to the wedding, and that's why he wants to win it. And, and then they start gabbing about their own. Then eventually the, they, they open up the elevator, the ref's there. They beat up kind of each other, and Carmella drags our truth into the elevator. One day I want to see Carmella win that 24-7 champion. That would be funny to see. The ultimate betrayal. Then we have the Firefly Funhouse. Again, more and more, I'm looking forward to this episode. Um, <laughs> or it might be the Firefly Funhouse would become our truths safe house. Uh, I like the Abandon All Hope Ye Who Exit here. Again, that's in reference to Dante's Inferno, Abandon All Hope Ye Who Enter here. Which is inscribed at the gates of hell. Or, yeah, in gates of inferno, hell. Close enough. Um, <laughs> again, the, the rabbit, rambling rabbits, whacking away at Mercy the buzzer because Mercy's trying to eat him again. And then, everyone's scared of the fiend. I can't wait till this fiend shows up. I hope this fiend has those mystical powers that Bray Wyatt doesn't have. But Bray Wyatt's team does have, just like the way they should book Finn Balor. Whereas you have Man Balor, very good wrestler, but then you have Demon Balor, who like eviscerates opponents and like bites their head off, and it's just vicious. It's, if you separate those two personalities, it works a lot better than just saying, "Oh, this is Demon Balor; he's undefeated." Oh, Finn, Finn Balor's lost a bunch of times. No, give him that. Aura when he becomes the demon. And just have him like go into like a coma the next day or amnesia the next day. Why am I covered in blood? Or as Lars would say, bodily fluids. So I'm eventually, again, you have the two hands. I forget what they're called, the, the two gloves. And for a while, it's like, yeah, the rabbit's allowed to stay, but then he says, you really don't want to come here. And then, of course, Bray Wyatt breaks out the Harley Quinn hammer and starts to smash the rabbit. He's obviously lying on a packet of duck sauce. So I guess that's what the innards of rambling rabbits look like, is duck sauce. So then he, he bottled it up, and it's a new breakfast bread. That was funny, though. Then you have the main event of the evening. It's Seth Rollins versus Kevin Owens with Sami Zayn as outside referee. It was just fun. Uh, Sami Zayn goes through the whole weapons checking. He checks the rib tape, makes sure he doesn't have a knife anywhere. <laughs> goes underneath the kick pads. It was funny. Um, I guess because the other referee has no idea what that, that's in reference to. Like In the early days of wrestling, they always kind of like patted you down. Make sure you had no, we no weapons, no foreign objects. Even though the, the heels always had a foreign object somehow. Or you just go, whoa. Oh. I'm not reaching into my trunks. What's this I found? A pair of brass knuckles in my trunks? How did they get there? So, <laughs> Sami Zayn just had some comic for to the match. The wrestling itself is good. Kevin Owens is, is, is great. He's great at trash talking. And this talking in the ring actually makes the match better. Adds another dimension to his wrestling. Um, Seth Rollins is, is an okay wrestler. He kind of does the same moveset over and over again. When he's, uh, Seth started to bleed. I don't know if he cut his eye. When he did the one suicide dot. Or if he popped a pimple. I know at, towards the end it was getting worse. But again, I know when I was a high school wrestler. It would be freaky if, if you just press against someone and, like, you popped a pink pimple. Or you had a pimple and, like, you hit the mat and, like, just burst. Because you're not bleeding. It's not the other. It's not like the other guy punched you. It's just, yeah, that happened. So, I, I, he kind of, again, it was really weird on the eye. It didn't look deep because it wasn't gushing. But it was just that weird pink color? That's the only way you know how to describe it. And then, of course, after the pink goes away, all the blood comes out. 
So, I don't know what happened there. But again, it was pretty good. It was a death uh, finish, though. Because Seth Rollins put his hands on an official. Seth Rollins, you naughty, naughty boy. You cannot put your hands on the official. Even if it's the official's name. It's Sammy Zayn. You have to leave your hands off the official. You have to referee the match. So they have to officiate the match. But therefore, it was a disqualification. And here in the WWE, when we have a death finish. There's always a dusty winner. And the dusty winner was Kevin Owens, that dusty Canadian, who won that dusty finish. And whose match earned a dusty cheeseburger. Baby, sweetheart. And that was Raw again. Actually, it was a fairly entertaining Raw. And with that, this was actually a better Raw than the Super Showdown. The matches were more interesting. They had more purpose to it. So we'll see what happens tomorrow on SmackDown. Again, for the rest of the week, I just have one more wrestling, oh, two more wrestling shows. On Tuesday, it's going to be, again, another kind of review show of SmackDown. And then just because I've taken a look at those viewing numbers on my analytics here at YouTube, and I am now going to start a live reaction Impact Wrestling show. Only because I think 19 people watched the live reaction and only 9 people. So it's 19 versus 9. 19 wins all the time, unless it's Bakrat. Then 19 becomes a zero. And you lose because nine wins. So with that, I'll be doing a live reaction show on Friday. That'll be good. That means it'll end at midnight too. There's no wrestling this week.